Okay, so when we're collecting wheat with the mini batch, uh, we generally want to come to the field where we've marked um, where we're going to take the where we're going to take our data. We usually mark it with flags, and the flags we'll usually put near the road, and then we'll walk in maybe 20 or 30 feet into the field so that we're kind of in the center of the field. And when you're taking the data, when you're taking the wheat, you want to try to take from a few different spots in, in a kind of a random area here. But also you want to try to take try to take grain that all looks kind of like the average grain of the field. So you just kind of got to look and say, what looks average around here? What is the average color, the average size, average height? And try to get mostly that kind of wheat. And you're just going to come through here and you're turn this on. And you're going to grab the wheat like that, and you and you kind of you kind of chomp it up so like this. And you can see that it's blowing the chaff out the side, and sometimes the chaff gets a little bit stuck in there, so you have to give it a little shake. And you're getting mostly wheat down in here. We do get a little bit of chaff down in here too, but uh, that's okay because we can clean it out later. But you want to fill up one of these and then put that in a bag and then fill up another one and put it in a bag and then if it's really full of chaff and junk then you want to go ahead and clean it out using the mini bat put it put a, a, a bottle full of full of the wheat and chaff in the top and an empty bottle in the bottom and run it through again and clean it out a little bit more and uh, until you have to clean it out by hand eventually you'll have to just clean it out by hand but you want to move around try not to damage the the grain too much especially the wheat when it gets really thick and full you want to try to, to walk in the same paths every time so that you're damaging the grain as little as possible. You don't want to just kind of tromp around in here, otherwise it's just going to be a waste of wheat. Um, so get the average sample. Uh, make sure that you're filling two of these full for the sam for the you'll need that much to get a good to get a good sample and and not run out. And uh, and uh, just you know try to get the the best thing that you can get. So what I'm doing here is when we get the grain and you get all of this junk in the grain and you got to try to remove most of that so I'm going to try to move that towards the outsides here and you're going to need about two cups to make your test with the mini gack and so I'm going to just try to separate out as much grain without the junk in it as I can. The mini bat will do some of that separating for you but not all of it it doesn't quite clean it perfectly and so we kind of have to clean a little bit of it by hand that's why we try to take we try to take two of the plastic containers on the on the harvester full of grain and that way we have a little bit of extra to help us try to clean out grain for harvesting and I'm not going to finish this process because this can take a little while, especially at the beginning of the season. It usually takes a little bit, a little time. But as I get this much, I try to set it aside and uh, in a bowl or something. Do I have a bowl here somewhere? No, a bowl, like a real bowl. And. Uh, Once I've got about two cups in a bowl set aside, that's pretty clean, and this is kind of what it should look like when it's, when it's clean. It should look kind of like this when it's clean, free of the debris and the chaff from the, from the field. Then if you've got a couple of cups of that, which I don't have at the moment, then I would fill the mini gack full of that and usually I like to do my testing inside of a big tray like this so that I can keep all the grain from one field in one place and not make a big mess. Um, but that way I'm, I'm keeping all the grain that's from this field in this area and then I put it back in the bag when I'm done just in case I have to retest. And, and uh, I usually use just a canning funnel. You can actually use this device. That's probably for you, huh? Yeah, just go get that green. Um, you can use this device if you'd like. You can fill this up and then and then open this to let it drop in. I found it's actually easier to just funnel it in personally. 
and uh, I'm going to just funnel in this rice with all this junk in it to show how to use this device. And usually I have to fill, this is a canning funnel, you can just buy it from Walmart or whatever, but I just fill the device up until it's, until it's full to the top of this and pull it out. So it's, it's not that hard to, to get this thing filled up. So let's actually go through a testing cycle. So the mini GAC has um, several buttons on it. You push the on-off button, of course. It's also the home button. And we'll start up with the little wait signal. And then it has this menu. And right now mine is set to wheat HRW, which is hard red wheat. Hard red winter, actually. Um, hard red winter for, for wheat. And you can change that type of wheat by, by pushing the down arrow going to product hitting the enter arrow, this one on the left, bottom left, and you can change to different kinds of things, corn and soybeans and different kinds of wheat as well. So that's the, the hard um, that's the hard red spring wheat. You can do that one. But anyway, it'll also give you some, some, of, some information about that. If you're interested in it, you, you probably won't use that. But you can change it if you need to. I'm, all my fields right now are hard red winter wheat. So that's what I'm. That's the setting I'm going to stay on. I go ahead and press Enter on that, and it says empty cell, hold upright and still. So you want to have the inside of this, the cell, completely empty and free of debris. You want to put it on a level surface, and then don't touch it after you push this button and let it calibrate. So what it's doing is it's going to calibrate. Essentially, it's going to zero out the the mass scale, and it's also going to check the temperature. And then when it's done with that, it says fill cell, strike cell, and then hold up right and still and press enter. So to fill the cell, I'm going to go ahead and put my wheat in. And this works with any grain, of course. Fill it up. And you have to do this fairly quickly or the mini GAC will turn off while you're, while you're working. And if it turns off while you're working, you have to stop, turn it back on, empty it, recalibrate it, and start over again. So you got to move quickly. So you can see here that I'm getting to the top, and I've got all this junk in here that I would normally wouldn't have. I would normally just have the red wheat in there. But I'm getting towards the top here, and I'm going to let it fill up a little bit. You can see that it's full, but it's not all the way over the top. You actually want it to fill over the top of the rim, so that it's kind of spilling over a little bit. And that is ideal. Then, without doing anything else, you don't want to pack it in or, or make anything settle at all, you want to use some kind of flat surfaced object, and they say to go ahead and use this thing, but I found it doesn't work all that well. I just use the edge of a, a flat edge of a kitchen utensil usually. You're going to strike off the wheat with a fairly, a fairly constant motion, of just straight across running the spoon along the edge so that it cleans the edge or the whatever it is you're using so that it cleans off the edge and leaves you with a very flat surface of grain across the top now every once in a while I'll have a hole in my surface right there I might drop a couple of grains of wheat in there just to kind of fill that hole but otherwise that is what they mean by striking the cell and you can see now that my screen has turned off and that's a problem it's going to make me start all over again because I wasn't going fast enough because I was talking and doing this video. And so to do that I'm going to have to turn it back on and you're going to see that it's going to reset to the initial screen which is kind of an annoying feature of this and you can change that time. I'm not sh I can't remember how to do it. The instructions I think you can change the shutoff time but, um, but I don't remember how to do it in the instructions. But anyway it's taking me back to this point so then I have to start again because if I press enter here it's going to say to empty the cell and hold upright and still again. So let's do it again and we'll do it faster without me talking so that you can see how it's done. So I gotta take everything off of it. Empty it out. Try not to try to be gentle with it. We'll test it. And this is where filling the cell with a with the actual device for it is a little bit of an advantage because it fills quicker that way. But I can fill it, I can fill it pretty quickly this way too.
So now that I've got it full here, I'm going to strike it off. It's pretty clean. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and let it test. And it goes through this little testing thing here. Striking it off is important or the, other, or the numbers will not come off correctly. The first screen that it gives you is going to be the screen that has percentage, pounds per bushel, and the, um, the temperature on here and what kind of, what kind of uh, grain this is. What I will usually do is I will take a picture of this screen along with the name of the, the field in the screen. So I've got the name of the field on this bag and I'll just kind of put it in the picture. But you've got to make sure that you take a very focused picture and you got to be quick again about it. You've got to take this picture, you don't want it to turn off. Take this picture with the name of the field so that you have a record of it. And then once you've got that picture taken, then you want to go to the home screen. So you push the on off home button. And you want to go down and take, and you want to go to the info page. So you get to the info, you press the enter button down here on the left. And then it's going to give you an information screen and you want to go, that's page one of two, you want to go to screen two of two. And it's got now the data, the raw data on the screen. That also, you need to also take a picture of that screen with the name of the, of the field in the screen, in the picture. And then you can go ahead and, uh, and be done with that. But do not throw the weed away until you've completely entered all, the, all of the data for the night in the computer. Because if you have a mistake, or if you have some kind of um, some kind of blurry picture that you can't find the data on, you're going to have to go back and redo that data for that field. And usually it takes about 30 minutes to do each one of these tests as you get started, and as you get better and better at it, and, then, and the grain gets better, it'll take you as few as 10 minutes, maybe even five. But it's starting off, it takes quite a while to to clean the grain and to get it to all work properly. Make sure that you take those pictures very clearly and that you move quickly but strike this off get everything done properly and then you can move on that is uh, I think all that I have to say about actually doing the testing and um, we will get on to recording the okay so here is where we record our data this is in Google um, I think we call it Google Sheets I guess but it's in the in our Google Drive, and uh, we can send you a send you a copy of this, I suppose, when you're ready to start recording data. But it, it is essentially just kind of like an Excel file. We're going to be recording several different things uh, in a in a particular uh, for a particular field. We have the date here, the time, what kind of crop it is, the setting that the mini GAC is on, and then we put a, a little column here for the field. Sometimes I have more than one field in a particular place, in a particular place, so I put that in there. But I don't necessarily need this field column most of the time. Test number. Sometimes I will test. Uh, I will test multiple times, particularly towards the end of the year. And then, then this is all the data. We have the percent, the pounds per bushel, the temperature, and then the D1, D2, D3, and D4 data points that are on the on the info page, and then the weight um, data point. And then any notes that I that I might uh, take, for example, uh, this and this field right here, I've I've labeled this field Anderson, and it's the red winter wheat here, and I should put red hard winter, but it's hard red winter wheat R H R W right, and this wheat field uh, GPS coordinates I I haven't written those down yet in the, on on this page, but I have them uh, I have them recorded, so make sure you record those GPS coordinates. So all the data that I put underneath this will all be for this field. And then if I go further down on the page, you can see that I have another field here, my Spurgeon Power South Hard Red, hard red Winter Wheat, and I have some data there. So, um, and I have, and I'll have several of these going down the page with space underneath them to get the, to get the, uh, the data for several weeks to come. This one, uh, I did have a note on it. Down here I had a warning number 22 for overly wet grain. And that's the first screen that will come up if you're testing grain that is really, really wet. And usually that's, you know, green grain kind of. 
and it comes up with a little uh, a little water droplet and a, and a 22, the number 22 on the screen, and then it has the little enter symbol. You can just write down a note saying that you got overly wet grain, and then press enter, and it'll still give you all of this information that you need to write down. It just may not mean the same things, and it may not be all that helpful for us. But we'll write it down anyway, but make sure that if you do get that warning number 22 on the mini GAC for overly wet grain, that you write it down so that we know that this data is a little bit off. Um, maybe a lot off, in fact. So we need to know that. And then once it starts, once you start testing grain, and it gives and it goes directly to the screen that gives you the percentage, and the pounds per bushel, and the temperature. Once you get to that point, you know that that grain is dry enough, and it's um, and you're going to get good, pretty much good data from there on out. It is possible that the field might go back to getting you giving that that uh, wet grain warning, but um, it doesn't happen very often once you start testing dry grain. And uh, we're going to, of course, share these. I have this shared with uh, all the people that are involved in this in this process, involved in this um, in this project, and uh, Simon being, you know, foremost among them. And he will sometimes come in here and give me uh, make some comments on things that need to be changed or need to be checked on, because he will go through and check the uh, check the data as I'm entering data he'll look for anomalies maybe some data point looks like it's not quite right so we'll go back and check those against the pictures so we always keep the pictures and I keep those pictures in my Google Drive if I go to my Google Drive here I've got this folder called Jared where I'm keeping my wheat for 2016 and I've got a folder for wheat 2016 and I've got this this um, document here which is the thing we were just looking at. If I open up the, the Wheat 2016 folder, it'll actually have lots of pictures in it. I don't have the pictures in there yet, just because uh, it takes a while to upload them and I haven't taken the time to do that. But I'll have the pictures of all the data that I've taken off of the Minigac, and I will put them in here so that we can go back and check them to make sure that we got them right and put them in here. And I can show you what that kind of looks like uh, from last year's. Since we're just getting started this year, it's not completely up and running. But last year's, if I look at corn, for example, if I look in the corn folder, I have all of these pictures from different days. So if I go to November 7th, for example, you can see that I've got these pictures from November 7th from these, from these couple of fields. And if I open on one of these up, you can really see how clear that picture is. Where I, I've really zoomed in, I've got really close to the mini GAC. You can see the percentages, you can see the pounds per bushel and the, the temperature and what kind of wheat it is or what kind of grain it is. This is corn. And you can also see the name of the field very clearly here. So everything is very clear and very big, easy to see. And you can also see that I've labeled the files. This one is 1107 for the date. So 1107, and then I put the type of we, the type of uh, grain, this one is corn, and I put the name of the field, Paul E or Paul East, and then I called this data one, because this is there's this is the first screen of the data, and then there's a data two for the second screen of the data, and so on. So just need to name your files in such a way that they stay together when you've got a lot of files together, and that they um, that it makes sense what they are when you're looking at the names. Uh, besides that, make sure you just keep organized, keep up to date, to make sure that you're entering things in and not losing files, not losing information because you're forgetting things. Um, do it all at once. I mean, you're getting paid by the hour, so you might as well do a good job of it and make sure that we've got uh, good solid data.